Human beings have been doing the whole arms versus armor, arms race for about 4,000 years now. It's reasonable to postulate it's much older than that. I mean, shields are much older than that, but the samples that we have recovered from history are about 4,000 years old. Uh, There's probably much older stuff, but we just haven't found samples of it that have survived the sands of time. And the stuff that we can physically date is about 4,000 years old. At least the modern conceptualization of wearing something on your person for the purposes of protecting yourself against weapons. So I, given the long track record of this arms race, I don't think that it's unreasonable for a modern citizen to want to participate in that arms race and take a more defensive stance on their self-defense. Now, in the past we've done lots of different body armor products out there and one of those products that we tested was the safe life defense frass which was a reactive body armor but it was an overt piece of body armor as in you wear your street clothes or whatever it is that you're doing then you put that over top and everybody can see it today's product that we're going to be looking at from safe life is the antithesis of that this is designed to be a covert piece of armor that doesn't make that large visible statement for the purposes of just going about your day, not disturbing anybody, yet having the ballistic protection available with modern materials. Here is a look at it in the carrier. Even with both sides, it's really, really thin. This is some of the thinnest body armor that I have ever come across. I popped it out for you guys really quick so you guys can see what's going on inside this thing before we get to the range component of our testing here. Paper thin, as you can see, I'll get a measurement for you. Before we get out to the range and set up for our ballistic test, I wanted to remind you all that Safe Life Defense offers VSO viewers a discount site-wide. You can find that information listed over at the affiliates page. And of course, any purchases that you make using that code yield commissions back to me. So thank you very much for your support. Let's go shoot some stuff. Now, if I was looking to actually conceal this armor, then I would be wearing a flowy shirt, like a button down or something like that, you know? But I decided to go with the standard t-shirt today just to represent that it's not entirely ridiculous. If you're looking for armor and things like that, you would notice this, but to the standard passerby that's not really paying that much attention, I just look like I gained 30 or 40 pounds, right? So as far as the carrier itself is concerned, you can see that it has these elastic tabs on the side that suck it up against your body. And those two panels come pretty close together as far as is meeting up. There is a, the wrap around. It doesn't feel like it weighs anything. And as far as range of motion and everything is concerned, uh, you don't lose any when wearing this. It feels very comfortable and it doesn't feel as though it's going to be overly hot. And you can see here that it only adds a little bit of bulk to your physique. I mean, that is very thin. Put a caliper on that for you guys. We're gonna shoot this here today and we're gonna work ourselves up from 22 and this is 3A, so it should go all the way up to 44 Magnum, but we're probably also gonna shoot some 12 gauge slugs at it. Full sandbag for our backstop. And then we have this to insert behind it. This is a block of clay so that we can see any back face deformation. Now, if you were wondering how this whole thing goes together, there's just a zipper here on the back and you can see the panel in there. So this is the same setup, but just a panel on the front. First up, some 22. We have a little quartz and scorpion here with a Bowers paradigm on the front of it. One shot, and we're gonna put this one a little bit low. And moment of truth, you can see the impact there. And basically nothing. There's definitely an impact. You can see that there's some imprinting of some of that clay on the zipper of the uh, carrier itself, but easily done. Moving right along, the most logical next would be nine millimeter, of course. And for that, we're gonna be using this Zenith ZF5. I believe this is the seven inch variant. So one round. I wanted something with a little bit more velocity than just a standard 9mm handgun. Go up just ever so slightly. Okay, yeah, definitely a bigger bullet. And a little back face deformation there. So you would definitely feel that one. A little bit of damage on the back of the carrier. Of course, what would an armor test be without a 357? This is the SAR 
38 chambered in 357 that you guys saw us review previously full video available on the channel of course one round okie dokie i can see the projectile in there it's definitely done a little bit more damage to the carrier itself than the nine mil which is to be expected and yeah i think it's just because it was a glancing hit you know, it was kind of coming in sideways, had a little less to capture, but yeah, I mean, still did some damage to the back of the carrier. <laughs> Who does it like 44 Magnum? And of course we had to break out the Deagle for that. I love this gun. Visible difference. Yeah, that definitely would have gotten your attention, boys and girls, but the question is, it did not pass through. Now, you may have some broken ribs, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can feel the heat through that right there. <laughs> you may have some broken ribs, but you do not have a 44 Magnum hole in you. I do not know when this video is airing. You know, YouTube review and censorship and, you know, that whole thing, yada, yada, Crimea River. But a week ago, as of filming this video, I put out a vid on this monstrosity. This is the Hot Sun Boltac chambered in 12 gauge. And this is a one ounce arrow slug. That is going to ruin your day. However, you did not get lead poisoning. So last night I went ahead and dissected this because I wanted to be careful and make sure that I captured all the projectiles. So I did it kind of after hours and this is what we've got to look at. So if we move the good one away, past the bag, we have our 357 right there in the first layer. I think that the reason that this stopped so early is because it was an all lead projectile and it was not a hard cast. So it's gonna open up rather rapidly. This armor did a fantastic job at stopping 357. Let's move on to layer two. And in layer two is where we find our 22 located right here. Flattened out easily on layer two, didn't really fray it too much. Right above that, we find our 12 gauge slug along with its wad. And you can see that it clearly did substantially more damage in the region to the layer two fibers, but it still stopped in layer two. Moving on to layer three. Here we have our 44 Magnum projectile and you can see that it is kind of co-located with the impact of the 12 gauge, but the 12 gauge was considerably higher. We can see a few fragments from the 12 gauge squirting through into this region. And I can tell that this is 12 gauge because those slugs are nickel plated. So this is some of the exterior lead from the 12 gauge. All of this down here is fragments of our 44 Magnum. And then you'll notice that there's a hole right there, one more layer, and we find our nine millimeter out of that MP5 clone. We know that this is the nine millimeter, not only because of the impact positions from the video, but also this is the only one that has a brass jacket on it. So nine millimeter going the farthest. While we're here, we'll go ahead and take a look a little bit deeper. What is right underneath of this layer? I wanna say that there's probably 10 or so more layers of this material. And then we get to what I would call our first layer of weave, followed by another layer of this material. You can see how this kind of goes down, right? This material is much denser than this woven material. This is light and fluffy. This is hard, like, Final verdict on the Safe Life Hyperline. You guys have seen the testing. I think that it speaks for itself, but to punctuate it, I would say that I'm fairly impressed. Normally, 
when we're looking at soft body armor like this, we expect to see nine millimeter and 44 go a little bit deeper into the vest. We didn't even make it to the weave. And given that this is such a thin, lightweight piece of armor, I was not expecting that. So if you're looking for some premium armor, I definitely think that this is something that you should consider in that category. And as I mentioned previously, Safe Life does offer a discount because this stuff is not exactly cheap. And that is the uh, critique that I would offer is that it is a little bit more on the expensive side of a vest. So keep that in mind and I guess use that code to great effect. And of course, special thanks to Safe Life Defense for sending this out here for testing. I greatly enjoy shooting expensive things. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully we'll see you on another video here at the VSO Gun Channel.